Do you know you have 30 minutes? Okay, we got some ink lines now. Funny because someone was like, hey, our ancestors had to go through way worse, so you can get up this hill for a mile and a half for a slice of pizza and some beer. Back to the channel please excuse the drumming i'm currently at packet pickup for the run richmond 1619. picked up my packet my team is currently, we're downstairs, we're one of the supporting sponsors of the race. So we're downstairs giving away free tickets to the Black History Museum, which is really nice. We're also having an event tonight after a pack of pickup called Time to Heal. It's basically like a spiritual liberation ceremony, if you will. Um, really just focusing on like Afro beats and a meditation slash yoga, like that type of feel. It's gonna be really nice. Um, and I'm actually going to be doing the welcome speech since my job is a sponsor. And I'm gonna be introducing Jaiman Hansun, the actor. I'm gonna put a picture of him on the screen. And I'm nervous because I feel like I'm gonna say his name wrong. I'm also a rambler, so I will be reading my speech off of my phone. <laughs> really excited for this weekend. Um, it's gonna be a jam-packed weekend because after the race tomorrow, I'm headed to back up to DC for my friend's birthday. We're doing like a spa day in DC, so that's gonna be really fun. So yeah, welcome to the vlog. I am gonna try to ask one of my coworkers to record me during the speech, but I don't know. They might have like rules against that since he's an actor, he's famous. We'll see. Hopefully I get to run next to him <laughs> at the race tomorrow. That would be, that would be cool. And so I'm really excited to see everybody on the course tomorrow. Whether you're running or walking is going to be a good time. Having participated in many races throughout my running journey, I've often noticed that minority participation is quite limited. I definitely think it's more about bringing resources to make running more inclusive for those in underserved communities. Yes, running and walking is free, but the apparel, the gear, the safe sidewalks to run on, the entry fees are all barriers and entry. So really excited for what this organization has done. This free event, it's a reflective moment. Time to heal. It's a restorative community practice. Wow, that was such a nice event. It was very intentional. The actor, Jaiman, he's just so like calm. He has such a calming energy. So I didn't realize I was introducing him. <laughs> so basically my job was offered to speak during the welcome speeches because, you know, my job donated a lot of money for this organization. And so I just thought that I was gonna be like one of like a couple of people. She was like, oh no, you introducing Jaiman. I'm like, I have not wrote or prepared. I just had like some generic, like, oh, I'm so happy this is coming to the community. So I had to scramble and like, just make my speech a little bit more intentional. And I had to like kick it off with the crowd. So I was first. So like everyone was talking, congregating, taking their seats, standing. And then the coordinator that I've been working with for the, for the past few weeks, he was like, all right, you want to go ahead and get started? I do get in my head about stuff like that, like public speaking, but everybody said I did really well. This is so lackluster because it's the exact same outfit that I wore during the 5K, if you watch my 5K blog from a couple weeks ago. But again, like I'm gonna be around my coworkers. I'm really not trying to wear a bunch of color and have my boob and vagina sweat showing. So here's my bib number, 0583. There's a 6.9K distance, I believe, which is like around four miles. And then this is the 16.9 which is the 10 miles the same stocks I got off Amazon in the Sauconese because they are really They're really making me pretty speedy. I PR my 5k I PR my half I guess now we can see if I PR my 10 mile distance, but I, I definitely don't think I am I am quite still fatigue from the half marathon I have been like really lazy all week. I only worked out once I did Orange Theory on Wednesday and I probably shouldn't even have done that because that's technically high intensity and weightlifting, but I didn't go too hard because again, I was fatigued. But yeah, I took Monday and Tuesday off, worked out Wednesday, and then I just took off Thursday and Friday, which is today, Friday. I was gonna go for a two mile shakeout run. I don't know, I just felt like it was kind of pointless because I was just still so tired. But tomorrow is not really about like hitting a number or anything. It's really just about enjoying the course and supporting a good cause. All set with the outfit. I put my gels, I'm taking two gels in the morning. 
and I put them in the freezer as well as my water bottle is in the freezer as well so my water can stay nice and cold while we wait at the start line. Y'all know me, I'm not really a huge fan on DoorDash but treating myself tonight with some Jersey Mike's. I don't know, I'm craving like a sub or a sandwich or something so I got um, some Jersey Mike's and that's gonna be my dinner and I'm going to hydrate. See y'all in the morning. September 21st and it's race day. I got about 10 minutes to scarf down a slice of bread. I wanted to make some coffee but I don't think I'm gonna have time to enjoy it. Um, so I might just do pre-workout. I haven't done pre-workout in a while actually so it's probably really gonna hit today. Um, so yeah I'm gonna have a slice of toast. I am a little hungry but I don't really want to sit down and I don't think I'm gonna have a bowl of oatmeal process and digest in 40 minutes. So slice of toast, a little bit of butter on it, pre-workout, and we're gonna head out. It's really annoying because we don't have any like to-go cups. I didn't pack any of my to-go like shakers during the move, so hopefully I don't spill this in my car. Okay, I really need to do like a quick three minute stretch. Do you know you have 30 minutes? I really don't like wearing my shades when I'm racing. I just feel like you can't see my face in pictures. And I just did my makeup. Well, I didn't do my makeup. I just put on some tinted moisturizer and my eyebrows. Yeah, I really don't like wearing shades. I like for my face to be out. So the start line is only three fourths of a mile away from where we're living at the moment. But I don't, I wanna get as close as I can as possible. Cause I, I could have just walked for real. That's one of the thing about these races is that like you gotta park so far from the start line where you're walking like a half a mile before it even starts but i mean it's a warm-up so that's fine just parked my car street parking got lucky and i'm only one minute away from the start line i always feel like i'm forgetting something but i mean i have my shoes and my headphones and my phone and my car keys so everything else is sort of irrelevant it's a beautiful morning perfect temperature for a run run well run strong run in the light Six 
miles down. Where to go? Okay, we got some inclines now. Holes, mile six, it's inclines. So I'm going to slow down. Woo! Ooh, last mile. All right, y'all checking in. I will definitely do like a full race day recap when I'm back from DC tomorrow. My friends are on the way and I have not packed anything. I don't I, I, I don't know why I didn't pack last night. I was just really, really tired and trying to make sure I was ready for the race. But I don't have a lot to pack. Like I keep like my to-go toiletries like always ready. And I'm just gonna take my pajamas, like a change of clothes if we wanna get like dinner or something later. I have like an outfit that I always wear, like a go-to outfit, I don't really, it's not my birthday, so I don't need to be cute. Then I'm just gonna pack a bathing suit. I don't know if any of you guys ever been to King Spa. I'm sure they have other similar spas around the country, but uh, all you need is a bathing suit and some flip flops because you just put everything in the locker and they give you a change of clothes and you walk around for as long as you would like. I wasn't feeling oatmeal for some reason. I really wanted some warm like eggs or something. So I made two hash browns from Trader Joe's and we were out of avocado. So I just put some cream cheese on top of the hash browns and boiled two eggs, salt, pepper, honey on there. And that was my post-workout race, or not post-workout. And that was my post-race meal, I guess. They have tons of good food, like a cafeteria in the spa. So I just figured I would just have something a little bit more grand, if you will, there. Because I just wanted to get something on my stomach um, before the two-hour drive up. Yeah, I'm going to finish packing. I'll see you guys at the spa. Come with us to King's Spa. <laughs> Birthday girl, how you feeling so far? You having fun? Relax. Period. <laughs> All right, it's been a couple of days since the race and the spa. Hope you guys enjoyed some clips from there. If you haven't been to King Spa and you're in Northern Virginia, I highly recommend. Um, it's worth the trip. And we were in there for like five hours, so I was very present and got to catch up with the girls. Um, but yeah, let's go over race day since that's the purpose of this vlog. So I also wanted to say thank you guys so much for your kind words um, from my vlog last week, the DC Half Marathon. Really appreciate all the kudos and also good luck to all of you guys that are out there training and just honestly just taking charge of your health and stuff. I know it's hard. I know running week after week can be quite mundane, but... Um, hopefully these videos give you a little in inspiration to keep up with your training and your overall um, goals. Yeah, but I woke up on Saturday morning. I had a really good night's sleep on Friday. I woke up and I felt pretty good. Like I felt refreshed. I felt loose, um, nice and limber. I did some dynamic stretches before the race. I felt fine coming up to the starting line. In case I haven't described the Run Richmond purpose in this video. So Run Richmond 1619. It was founded by Jimon Hunsun, the actor from Blood Diamond, which is what he's most notable for. Um, he started this race here in Richmond, which is remembering 400 years of slavery, but also sort of like celebrating unity and diversity today, especially in Richmond. It's a very historic town. Um, we have a lot of statues, a lot of museums, a lot of murals and things like that. And that was definitely heightened around like the Black Lives Matter movement in 2020. And so he brought that race here and he does plan to expand it in Africa and in Europe, which is supposed to make like a triangle of the Atlantic slave trade. And it's really cool. It's really impactful. And that was definitely shown throughout the course. I encourage you guys to download the app. The organization itself has an app where you can 
during the run, you were able to basically like listen in the app. And during parts of the course, they were explaining like history and parts of the town. And it was just very, very thoughtful and impactful. And it just, I'm so glad that I did the race, even though I was feeling a little fatigued. Everybody that I know participated said that that was like the most community forward and thoughtful and inspiring race they've ever done. And me working with the marketing team, um, because again, my job sponsored the race, working with the marketing team to promote the race um, and us as a sponsor, like I really saw the behind the scenes of just the messaging and the visuals and just how it all came to life. So I highly recommend if you're like in the Richmond area or near Richmond, like on the East Coast and you just want to switch up the type of races you do, I highly recommend this one. They're definitely gonna do it again. I can only imagine it getting bigger. I was expecting it to be a little bit more hilly earlier on in the race, but it was actually quite flat up until mile six. So if you're familiar with the Richmond area, we basically started around where the half marathon ends. We ran like under some bridges, around some railroad tracks, you know, you're getting it, you know, you're getting it, the underground railroad, all that stuff. So um, yeah, we started, there and then sort of like worked our way through almost like trail running and then we came up like around main street if you're familiar with like bottoms up pizza that area over there um and then we just sort of like weaved throughout um downtown richmond so if you're familiar with downtown richmond and shackle bottom in general you know like richmond is basically like at the bottom of a valley and so around mile six is when we had to basically turn around that's when the hills were present when i tell y'all like mile six and seven was nothing but 45 degree angles the whole time there was like a small plateau which is where they had like a water stop and everybody was walking i continued to run because i train hills all the time i train hills at orange theory and i also try not to skip hills when i am running outside and so i was very proud that i was able to run the entire 10 miles even on the hills and the inclines but it was tough like it was it was probably one of the toughest hills I've ever had in a course funny because someone was like hey our ancestors had to go through way worse so you can get up this hill for a mile and a half for a slice of pizza and some beer I still had about two and a half miles to go and it's also funny because you can see like the elite runners they're almost done basically they have like half a mile left they're turning the corner to go to the finish line and so like I'm running past seeing them and I'm like dang I still got two miles to go and I never fight the hills I just slow down and try to keep a good cadence on my feet when I have to run up a hill and just pick it back up because typically what goes up must come down so there's always like some downhills that you can look forward to and there was a big downhill towards the end of the race and I was sprinting I believe my last mile was like eight minutes and some change so I definitely took advantage of like the downhill portions but I did like I did like the mixture of trail running versus road running because I'm used to most of my races being all on the road so that was a nice change of pace. Okay, I've been yapping, let's get to the stats. I know y'all like girls. Total distance was 10.1 miles. So it was a little over 10 miles, which is fine. Uh, again, it was a 16, 19 K, not necessarily a 10 miler. Average pace was nine minutes and 16 seconds. Very, very proud again of hitting under that double digits for these double digit distances and elapsed time. So total time was an hour, 33 minutes and 41 seconds. What's also crazy is I came in sixth place in my age division. So I believe women between the age of 30 and 34, I believe there were like 40 or 50 women that were running the the longer distance. And apparently I came in six, which is crazy. Cause I feel like I'm not that fast, but I'm like, hey, I'm taking a win is a win. So each split, mile one, 10.03, mile two, 9.23, mile three, 9.09, mile four, 9.15, mile five, 8.51. That must've been sort of like a downhill. Mile six, 9.09, mile seven, 9.17. Mile eight, 956, yeah, I was really slowing up after those hills. Uh, mile nine, 911, aw. And mile 10, 844, again, there was some downhill terrain that I got to take advantage of. And that last point one was 642, so I was booking it. And it was so cute because I saw Caleb at the finish line, like as I was sprinting towards the finish. It was really nice seeing him at the finish line because Caleb is not a morning person at all, especially not on a Saturday morning. I'm like, honey, I'll see you when I get home. I don't want you to feel pressured to have to drive somewhere, park, walk a mile to see me at the finish line. It's fine, but he did want to show up, and so I'm so happy he did. 
and that was like the little boost I need to get to the finish line so I think what makes a race experience so grand is everything that you get and all the opportunities and booths and vendors that are on the lawn after and you just kind of go up and um get your beer get your blanket or whatever but for this one they didn't have any alcohol which I understand because I assume getting an alcohol license for such a small event isn't worth it but they did have like fresh coconut that you can buy so I had like a fresh coconut juice and that was this is iconic to me like this is so much better than a beer or a glass of wine or a seltzer like someone is here chopping open coconut <laughs> like granted you had to pay for it but i still think that's pretty cool um and sweet star root if you're familiar with kelly lemon of course she was the mc for the race so she was really like bringing the heat and the energy when people were crossing the finish line and of course for the the party after when everyone finished it was our community it was our culture i haven't seen that after a race highly recommend would we'll do it again I feel great. I ran three miles yesterday. I had took two days off. I got a massage when I was at the spa, so I think that really helped with some tightness. And then I took um, Sunday and Monday completely off. I ran three miles yesterday, which was Tuesday, and today is Wednesday. I'm currently about to go to Orange Theory, and I'm gonna do a total body lift today because I wanna just give my legs a little break from the pavement. So that will conclude everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here. We would love to have you part of the family. I'm almost at 500 subscribers. Only took me three years, but hey, I'll take any progress. Um, but yeah, comment below uh, what else you'd like to see. And until next time.